The second week of the India Asia Champions League, we have True Rippers who won their first week match and against Marcos who making their debut in this league. What are the bands going to look like? Are we going to see a Sableye band, of course? Most likely. Maybe. And... We have an Eldegoss and a Snorlax ban. Okay, that is very different from what we usually see. Going for the utility. And uh, that leaves open a Blissey first pick. I mean, that's true, Ripper's just that they want to ban Eldegoss and pick Blissey. I mean, honestly, that doesn't seem like a terrible strategy either. They secure Blissey with us. They ban all their healer support on the other side. And even if they go Sableye now, they still have Blissey into Sableye. So honestly, I don't think it's that bad of a choice. This Tyranitar first pick is very aggressive and very early. Mew, I like. Mew is always decent, right? Mew is just a safe attacker. Tyranitar this early on is questionable, especially since you don't really get a good healer anymore. We have a Scissor Mama Swine. That seems very good as well. Snorlax is gone. I'm going to secure the Mama Swine into a Scyther. Most likely could also be Scissor. And that's the Sableye. There is the Sableye and a Mr. Mime. So Marty Marcos is very interesting in their draft so far. But I mean, they still have three top tier Pokemon, doesn't matter what. And uh, last two picks. Azumarill, India loves Azumarill still. India has a crush on Azumarill, that's for sure. And a Cramorant. I think, I mean, I think Cramorant is a good Pokemon myself. Like, I think he's very underrated. I think it's a good Pokemon. Ushifu last pick. Okay, that is... <laughs> Imagine getting Ushifu as your last pick. No, that is something else. But they get it. Marcos, blocking in the Yoshifu last rotation. We don't see that all day. So yeah, we have any special hit items. The Sableye is running Attack Bait, Cookie, Score Sheet, and Goal Getter. That's the first Goal Getter Sableye in the tournament, I'm pretty sure, that I've seen, at least that I've casted myself. Attack Bait, Muscle Band, Focus on Mamoswine, no Rapid Fire Scarf. Yoshifu running Scope, Attack Bait, Razor Claw. Very aggressive. And we have Siphon Blissey, Q on Scizor, Darksh on Mamoswine, Ego on Azumarill, and Devish on Cremorant. Against Merrim on Mew, Volk on Trenata, Rex on Mime, Kyurem on Sableye, and Snowy playing the Urshifu. Love of X-Speeds. We don't have full here on Cremorant against Urshifu, it could be very bad. But again, he has a Blissey, right? If Blissey goes safeguard this match, then uh, he should be totally fine. I mean, he should be going safeguard, right? Against Sableye and Urshifu. And Mr. Mime, safeguard is going to be absolutely top. It can remove power swap. It can stop Ushifu Unite. It can stop Sableye from uh, stunning your team over and over again. So I hope we see a safeguard. Um, even though Softbird X, of course, is a great counter to Mew as well. Softbird X are going to heal all the Mew poke back up pretty, pretty fast. We have Mr. Mime already. He steals the last hit. He gets it. He's going to score seven points. Good to see by him. But the Swine Noob is going to be very aggressive now. Why are we hitting two with <laughs> Lavita jungling? Didn't have any invades happening from either side. And we have Snowy on top lane. Actually, stacking for free right now. Swine Noob looking for two. Again, he has attack weight, so he wants to start stacking. And he's going to try and see this bunny weight. Can he actually do it? He goes in with the tackle and he gets it. It doesn't even matter if he dies right now here. I think it's still fine if we get the last hit and die for it. But we have first KO on top. Sableye is going down to a gank. Azurum is going to pick up the first KO for True Rippers. And uh, yeah, they're going to get Tyranita fast. They actually needed some levels here on top lane specifically. He level 5 for Shifu. Mr. Mime gets caught on bot lane. He is getting caught off guard. Two KOs already for South True Rippers. And Snowy is also dropping super, super low. Scythe is on the chase. And Kiram, the Sableye is being slowed down right now by the Red Buff. Can they chase him down? No, they can't. They give up on it. But they're going to start just diving this goal in. Volk has to be careful. The Cup is already dead. The Pupita is also going to die. Easy double KO for True Rippers on top. Stable, I like, couldn't help out. Marcos almost with their first KO, and they get it. Confusion is going to finish off the pillow fine. Max range, just without any bongs. <laughs> just gets it. No, no, confusion against the ES. Light screen, not going to confirm any other KOs. And we have Dive. Dive, Air Slash, of course, the best Crumber run build. It's not even close. I know there's some Hurricane Surf Believers, but uh, Air Slash Dive is still the superior build currently, for sure. We have a knockoff! It's a knockoff Sableye. I mean, I guess that's what the goal getters for as well. <laughs> it is a Kyurem playing the knockoff Sableye for his team. He's gonna try and score points, I guess. Oh, they're getting caught right now. Ego's already level 7. He's getting feared the one time. He's getting stunned again. 
And he's gonna go down. This could be huge for Marcus. Vic Blows being charged. They're fine too. Can they find more? But in two for two for now. Electro Ball's gonna finish off as well. Someone. Scyther's now level 8. He's looking for the double hit kill on Mew. I think he got a reset as well. Yeah, he gets the reset. Do a big beat. Can he find the KO as well? Cramorant is here to save him. And join him. Four KOs for True Rippers. Triple KO for Scyther. With the double hit reset. Makes it out alive as well. Oh my. Very close team fight, but also good good try by Marcos. They actually had some good chances there. <laughs> but no, 11-9 Scyther. Is he going to unite movement? He's confused, Ray. Confused Ray knockoff. All right. Very interesting. 109 to 44 points now. Troopers in great control. 11-9 Scyther already. Nice level by far in the game. And the goal getter Sableye is going to get taken down. <laughs> Shocking. Goal getter Sableye has been taken down. Ushifu is having a good time on top now. Level 8 already. He's gonna head towards bot. But Azuma already killing Pupita, who's still a turn time. They're just diving the school. The camera sadly was not on there, but they just get dove completely. They're trying to figure out some math right now, which they're doing correctly. 16 go in, and then the 25. We like to see that. Making the highest overcap they possibly had. And going for the Registry as well now. So true rippers. Great early game. Finishing off the first goal as well. Ego almost level 10 already. And heading back towards top. Let's see what Kirim can do with his knockoff save. Like, Ushifu's gonna hit level 9 right here. He does have Unite move up, but Blissey's already level 8. He's gonna get charged, start chase down right here. Power stop lands on Doom. He's gonna start healing him up. Davish is dropping quite low, and he gets Ushifu Unite move. But there's the safeguard they've been talking about of Blissey. And Ushifu's gonna fall. That's what the safeguard value is for. Scythe is also just gonna absolutely smash Sableye. We like to see that here on the chase. He may be fine for Mr. Mime and Mew as well. Mew has Unite. He has to be a bit careful. But Mew can't react in time. And Kyo's just popping off right now on the Scyther. When he hits the power swap. And he's going to make it out alive as well. The Scyther is out of control right now. That's why Scyther has such high priority. And that's why we don't see Scizor at all right now. Scizor will never be able to do the same right now. <laughs> that Scyther is currently doing. So much damage coming out. I think it was quite risky though. If Mew gets Unite move out there. It could have backfired quite, quite badly. There's the Mew this time, has to save himself from the Aqua Terra Azumarill and Regilecki start being cleared. They have Azumarill Unite still and Mamo Swine, but Mamo is currently in mid. They're looking for this push still. Ego should be a bit careful, he's under half HP. Again, no soft by the X since we have safeguard. And they're engaging with the knockoff, Mamo Swine looking for the push on top, but there's a fight currently breaking out in the jungle, which we currently can't see. Because the camera allows Mamo Swine. There we go, Volk is already very low and they're getting dove on again by the Scyther. There's an Ancient Power being charged into his Unite move. Can he start stomping? He's just getting kited. Oh, he's one auto tech away from killing like three. But they all live. Vic Blows, meanwhile, is going to get Mamo Swine. But Trooper is still winning the team fight in the jungle. But this could be a lot of points going in for the side of Marcos. They're going to get 40. 12 over cap, 109 points now for Marcos. Power Swap's going to land on Ego, and he's stuck to it. He's going to be slowed. It's a nice KO as well. For the side of the red team, or orange team, I guess. Next Reggie is spawning on bot. Two Rippers only have Kremlin to unite up, compared to Ushifu and Mr. Mime. Kirim though, getting caught again, trying to score points with a save ally. He's trying to just, uh, I don't know, I mean, yeah, he's playing knockoff goal getter, so I guess he wants to score points. Reggie C is gonna start being taken now. Ancient power is being charged, looking for the Mamos fine, but he's not going to KO Mamos from Red High Horse Power goes in. They're getting locked up. Mime Unite is trying to pee for Trinita. Bliss Unite is going to save Mamos fine, literally on 1 HP, and the Regis is going to for sure go down to Marcos. Wait, did they actually get it? Was that big blow enough? I actually can't. Yeah, I think it was. Ushifu stay at least getting the Regis steal, but they do lose a lot of members in exchange. And we have 140 left for Rayquaza to spawn. Reggie, Aleki up in 5 up top. Azuma is going to steal away a blue buff unless Mime can somehow do something about it. The confusion is too late. It is too late. Nice blue buff for Azumare. Cooldown reduction 10%. That's still what blue buff gives, so it's honestly a very great objective to play for. 10% cooldown reduction is a lot. Especially on some Pokemon. Hey, Horse pause going on Mew. Mew has to counter with its Unite. And it's looking for the fight now. Nice Solar Beam onto Scythe, who's getting locked up by the knockoff. And they catch the most important member of True Rippers. Scythe is down. Couldn't use its Unite move. Just got locked down. Kirim, Aqua, <laughs> the Water Pulse is bouncing between the members of Marcos now. And Ego is so strong on this Azumare. Now the Aqua Tail is going to get Tarenta quite, quite easily. And he just seems unkillable right now, this Azumare. He seems very unkillable. So even if Scyther goes down, they still have two other carries with the Cramorant and Azumare who can step up after Scyther goes down. And now Regilecki is pushing towards top goal Kirim again, looking for the score right here. 
but Scyther knows he's around. Gold Gator not getting too much value yet, I have to admit. But uh, yeah, I feel like that's not a surprise necessarily, right? And Regilic is getting cleared quite easily. Tyranitar almost level 12 now. Still not where he wants to be. I think you want to be always 13 or 14 when it comes to red quarter spawning. You just want to be so tanky. The higher level you are, the tankier you get. Very, stra very straightforward. The more your passive does as well. Tyranitar's passive gives you additional defense and special defense stats. So the higher level you are, obviously the more defense and special defense you're going to get. <laughs> he's looking around again. He wants to score so badly, but Scyther's around. He still knows about it. There's the goal getter. Ah, he's gonna get 62 points in at least. Can he get out though? Again, he doesn't have Shadow Sneak, so he has, doesn't really have any escapes. But he just runs away. Marcus in mid-fighting now. Power Swap is on Ushifu. Mamos fell already landing quite, quite early. Locking up the Mr. Mime. He might just fall. He has to passively unite move. He's running away. Focus Band proc. And Crumlet is doing so much damage right now. They all zoned out out of the Rayquaza pit. Mr. Mime might die to the Water Pulse bounce, and he does! <laughs> he does. Oh no, Shifu! He didn't. He moved his cursor. And he knocks the Cramorant away from him. What a huge mistake by the Shifu as well. He could have maybe at least killed the Cramorant. Oh, that is. That is a terrible mistake to be doing in this point of the game. And Rayquaza, he's starting up the big blow, but he's going to go down to the Scyther Unite. And Shuripa is going to take the Rayquaza. He is going to take down. They're gonna take down Rayquaza, they're gonna start scoring. Low of points. He's also gonna make it though, because they have a Trinitar defending. True damage, you can't score against it. But Trinitar also can't can't actually get rid of Shears of Rayquaza if it's true damage up, it's also quite funny. 100 going for Blissey. And uh, Trinitar is just chasing <laughs> Scyther across the entire map. I feel like they could have actually maybe tried defending. Ushifu has true damage, Trinitar has true damage. If they defend multiple goals and Trinitar is in the base, they could have maybe defended some more. But yeah. 40 seconds left for Marcos to maybe do something. Looking for this push right here. But I need a lot of points. Wicked Blow is being charged. Scyther still has this shield up. And Azuma flies and Taranta is already down. Two are down. Ushifu dies too. Kirim is going to be the next one to finish off. But now his goal getter keeps him alive for a bit longer. Scyther takes down Mime. He was going to get a chase down. Right? Can he actually find Kyo though? Meruem? And he gets him. At least one last KO for him. Quadra! For the Azumarill. And Ego having a good game. Troopers is gonna take the first map. Quite convincingly still. The last team fight wasn't even close. Kramarain doing a lot of damage there as well in the last team fight with its Unite move. He zoned out Mr. Mime. He dot like Tyranitar to half HP. Someone else to half HP. 11 12 on the Azumarill. 11 takedowns, 12 assists. So doing great. In general, a lot of chaos for trippers. Over... Th is it over over 20? Over 30, actually. Over 30 chaos for trippers. 92 on Scyther, 91 on Azumarill. Draft number two. This time, Marcus with first pick. In case you're wondering how the first pick happens, I think it's the losing team can choose if they want to be first or second pick. We have Trenator banned. They actually were scared of the Trenator. Really? And a Mew first ban. Interesting. Now we have a Snorlax first pick. Being secured, I assume Troopers is going to probably pick Blissey and Scyther. I don't know if they want to consider anything else. I mean, it worked very well last game. They can obviously also consider Sableye themselves if they want to. But no, the Azumarill. They really just like this Azumarill so much. This time picking it in the first rotation. What is Marcus going to respond with? I would for sure try and pick, I mean, Blissey away, but... Gardevoir? Okay. I mean, Gardevoir is pretty difficult to play into Scyther, though. And a Clefable! It is a Clefable being played for Marcus. And I can never expect what they're going to pick next, I swear. <laughs> I, don't, I never know what the next move is going to be so far. It's very hard to tell. Trippers going for the Mamoswine. Again, and this time a Mr. Mime. A Mr. Mime for the side of Trippers. Marcus going for the Yoshifu, maybe. No? This time, yes. This time they're not up against the Bliss, but Blissy could still happen as a last pick. Venusaur and Delphox. No. What? What is happening? Don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Don't. Yeah. All right. Delph. But Delphox, Gardevoir, and Yoshifu. Okay. Two backline damage. I was, I was like, don't pick Venusaur, man. 
I really thought I would have picked Venus out. <laughs> I was scared for a second. And Cramorant again. I mean, I think Cramorant was decent last game. So, going for the Cramorant. Back to back. I do like it. Any special head items, Stubby Glasses and Focus Band on Gardevoir. Stubby Glasses, Shelby on Delphox. Um, besides, everything looks quite, quite normal. Stubby Glasses, Focus Band on Mr. Mime as well, one being stacking. Buddy Focus, Choice Packs on Cramorant. So it's very interesting to see that last game we had an Eldegoss and a Blissey first pick, and now in this game, both of them are completely ignored. After what happened last game in the draft. So completely different things when it comes to support or priority. Also no Sableye being picked. And yeah. Game is starting. Mary is heading towards top. Oh, do we have an invade? Might be Swainoop going for an invade right here. Yeah, it looks like it. Swainoop is going for an invade. We have Clefairy and Cupview running towards top against a single Mary. Single Mary. And no, he's not invading. He's actually just guarding his own jungle. But from what? Ah, oh, from the Snorlax. Right. He's guarding his own jungle from the Snorlax, which could always be obviously an invade. But he sees him on bot lane now, so the Swine is running towards top. Ego's not going to get Slash hit right here. Goes over to Kieran. The Fairy is able to secure this one. But the Swine is going for a cup view. And this could be quite bad. Rex is chasing down Scythe right here. The light screen confusion is going to miss. He's going to start auto attacking here. Next boost auto attack should be there. Does he still focus ban? No, he doesn't. Can he actually get him? I think he can. First blood for Marcos. First KO of the game. Ego trying to get level 5 right here, but the Clefairy. Last hitting is too strong. He's going to get to level 4. Turn into Clefable. And has the Moonlight. Can Scyther maybe get some KOs right here? No, he can't. He's going to try and score 14. I feel like he could have easily scored 14 there. Doesn't go for it. He's going to start diving now. Dropping quite low. The Moonlight is going to keep Clefable quite healthy. And the Ataris are going to disappear. All go over to Drew Rippers here. Dust engage again onto Kyurem. Clefable is trying to keep himself alive with the Moonlight. And he doesn't. Dark barely with the last auto attack. Gets a KO for him. He's going to get his Pillow's Fight Evolution done. And he's heading towards an invade maybe now. We already have a Delphox for Marcos though. Which means he has Mystic of Fire. So he can actually last it quite well. Mystic of Fire does good damage early game too. Damage kind of getting caught off. Next Heavy Slam and another KO for Snorlax. <laughs> he's going to steal both berries away. Actually now if we got the second one but it doesn't matter. Heavy Slam lands on Mr. Mime again. They're going to start scoring points. Fox really wants to score these 30 here. Would be a huge amount of experience. But double hit Scyther coming from the side. Heavy Slam instantly onto him into Psyshocks. And he loses his Focus Band. He does lose his Focus Band for it. But he gets away. Mid Atarius are up now. And Marcus full rotating towards it. Snowy is already dropping super, super low. The Moonlight is going to start healing him. Water Pulses are not going to bounce. And uh, Ego is going to get away. Barely Marcus with a much better early game now this time around. Of course, behind in points, but they're pretty ahead in experience, I would say. I mean, it's pretty even. Pretty even experience, too. But I feel like they have much worse early games, so... Right, they had a cup view. Um, Dave Fox is one of the worst early game junglers until level 6. We had a Riots, so the early game was not that great. But they hold themselves ready for the first 3 minutes of the game so far. Snowy looking for level 7. Has the wicket blown now, so easy last hitting for him. But he can't contest these Atarias. He's just going to safely get level 7. I mean, he knows he's in the 1v2, or he was in the 1v2. Doesn't want to overextend. Plus 5 moving towards bot. We're going to have a 4v4 on bot for the Reggie. And Story might just walk there as well. I got to both stay top lane. Oh, Rex is dropping super low. 4-man heavy slam. But he dies during it. Can they find maybe some KOs? They find Scyther. That is huge. I think Reggie C was the one that finished off the Scyther. That's a huge KO for Marcos, and now Snowy, see, he's going to join in. He's going to have the Wicked Blow for the last hit, but he's charging it way too early. Does he? Oh, yeah, yeah, he charged it way too early. It actually ran out of time. Pillow Strike with a 4-man high horsepower. Now from the side. Doesn't confirm any KOs, and he just charges his Wicked Blow way, way too early. No one had any damage left of his team to get any low. Lefebvre rolling a block, peeling for the team. Scyther jumping in. He's diving super, super deep in the any flux zone. Aqua Tails are landing on Kyurem, and Steve's going to get taken down. 17 points going for Mr. Mime. 24 for the Pillow Swine, 30 for Zumare. And now to Rippers in full control yet again. In the second match. Going for the mid Atarias. And uh, yeah, Merim needs to be the carry. I mean, he's level 9. A Death Fox can always carry. But it's very difficult against Scyther. I've mentioned in previous casting that Scyther is a super good counter to Death Fox. It can be very, very difficult. 
to do much against them, especially when you just get your Night Move clicked on. And uh, yeah, it just depends if Cliff Hable with the gravity can be next to Deathox in these team fights. As Remembering Knight's going in, he's already super, super low though. Gets a lot of damage out though with the Water Pulse. A lot of damage. Regilecki is still uncontested so far. So Loki players are shocked right now, thinking, wow, these pro teams are not going for Regilecki. Incred incredible. Gravity is being put down. Regilecki is dropping super low. Kyurem is going to fall. Cromerty Knight is doing so much damage in the pause. Oh, we have a pause. And we're back in the match. After the pause, someone had technical issues. And Troopers were still on the push. Which Lecky is gonna kinda just ruin them some points right here by finishing off the first first goal on top. And Troopers, of course. Good thing we didn't have to remake anything. Players are back in. Would be very shameful for Troopers, right? Because they have a decent lead right now. 14 seconds for Bottom Richie to spawn. And both teams are maybe looking for it. I mean, they have all Unite moves up across the board, except for Delphox right now and Kremlin. As Umaria are missing Unite moves. Oh, Shivo just used it somewhere on Kremlin top lane, I think. Did he? Not quite sure. Like going for it now. And Troopers is just looking for the gate. Huge high house power lands on two into Azubra Unite. Marcus pretty much can't move, but oh my god, so many Shis are keeping them alive. And the Guard of all Unite also hitting. Big characters right here. It's actually good team fight. Some are looking for Marcus right now. It's chasing heavy slam, lands onto two as well. Scyther is gonna get knocked up, but he's gonna get away. Man, there were so many shields and buddy barriers around, keeping God of War alive. And they somehow win that, it looked so bad for them. Impressive turnaround in this team fight. And Marcus is gonna take this red eyes on bot lane. Heavy slam again, They're looking for this break, maybe on the goal, but they have to be a bit careful. They have no unit who's left. But Trippers also has nothing left. Seven two hundred twenty-two points for True Rippers, so Marcus still looking for some scorers, right? They have to start scoring points. Otherwise, they're going to have a very hard time in the late game. In case, you know, Rayquaza doesn't even get taken. 20 seconds for the last Vigilecki on top. And it was very good. It was a huge engage by Mamoswine. But again, we had Clefable Unite with Buddy Barrier saving Gardevoir for so long. And Gardevoir Unite also hitting all the people that dove onto the Gardevoir quite easily. Trippers in position for top. Marcus, of course, gonna have a hard time fighting for this, but I could stay there, Foxy, one more time. But instead, they're just gonna go score bot lane. I like this. Who cares about this Regilecki? They score 40 points and they might also score 46. I don't think Scyther can make it back to base in time. This time is gonna jump now, but no, he can't make it back in time. They're gonna score 46 points. And I don't see that so smart. Who cares about this Regilecki? It's just gonna get cleared, anyways. Unless Troopers can maybe look for a bottom push now. So closing the gap in points. As I mentioned, they have to score points. They do it instantly. 164 now. 166 for Marcos. And Ushifu still on the right side and buying time. So you can see, yeah, Reggie Lecky, guys. Reggie Lecky. Crazy. Crazy objective over here. Again, losing one team 80 points in total. <laughs> That's why you still have to people have some characters defending goals as well. If they have Mamos Fine or Mr. Mime defending bot goal, that's what they should have been doing, right? You have to, you can't commit five Pokemon to one side of the map. You just can't. So you really want to have Mr. Mime or Mamos Fine still in bot lane to maybe defend a potential push. Because this was pretty bad for True Rippers. And now we have Rayquaza spawning in 8 seconds. 12 on Ushifu, 13 on Delphox, 13 on Gardevoir against a level 12 Scyther only. So not for high level this game for the Scyther. Really hasn't done all too much yet in this match. And I'm going to start poking Rayquaza. They want to look for a fight. Heavy Slam is going to miss. That's love. Engage already gone. And Dark is might looking for the engage. I see a crash lands on the back line. Can't really connect with anything yet though. Power swap also. Kiti Mamoswine back up. And Yoshivo's going to kill Cromorant. But the cameraman doesn't show us the fight. Cameraman. What? <laughs> Please. Okay, no. High horse power landing on three, four targets. But he's stuck in the gravity. Can you unite move? Mamoswine just dies. The confusion is going to hit and try to buy some time. And now Rayquaza is going to get started by Team Marcos. They're going to start going for it. What can Ego do right here? Mr. Moon Knight is going in. Not doing all too much. Scyther is also looking for the engage. But he's only going on to Nushifu with a huge shield. And now Rayquaza is dropping super, super low. Can Scyther maybe secure it? No, Shifu does it. He's going to secure the Rayquaza for Team Marcos. And now they're going to start pushing. Terrible team fight for Troopers in the end. They had no chance. 80 go in. 366 points now for Marcos. They're going to score top as well. 100 right here. 160 to 222 points now. Troopers might still have a chance, but it's going to look dire. Oshifu still also looking on bot for maybe another score into the enemy base. 
if troopers are going for a push. Like, he might be able to get Solex right here, but he's not going to have a big death timer. He's just buying so much time. 40 seconds left. So troopers has one more push, but you see Marco just swarming the base. They're like, okay, look, good luck running to our side. We're going to keep scoring 708 now for the side of Marcos. And we might just go to game three. I mean, we, we might not just fall. We are going to game number three. They're going to start diving, of course, the goal. But the Fox United is here to defend. Mamos Swine is down. Mr. Mime is going to fall. Scyther's being chased down by the Snorlax, who takes no damage right now anymore. He bonks him with a block into a Psy Shock. And Azuma heavy slammed as well. He's going to get taken down. What a huge win for Marcos in this game number two. They lost Cromorant in the last team fight almost instantly, and I think that's because they don't have full heal on it. I'm just gonna say it again. Full heal not having on a Pokemon against Ushifu is gonna lose you games. If you don't have any unstoppable effects. I mean, he does have dive. Maybe he can maybe dodge it with dive, but it's quite, quite difficult, right, to do it all the, all the time. If he can even. So he gets caught by the Ushifu Unite. He goes down. And uh, yeah, full heal is so important. I, I still don't like that people refuse to play it on carry Pokemon. Draft for game number three. Trippers again with first pick this time around. Let's see if they do the same as last or like first game. <laughs> they bent Edegos first pick Blissey. But last game they completely ignored Blissey as well. So that was quite weird. After completely, yeah. Now they bent the Edegos again. Marcus going for a Mew Ben. And do we see a Blissey first pick for a second time? Or are they going to go something else? Scyther. Sableye again ignored as well last game. And yeah, there's the Blissey. Blissey has been first picked. Rex considering a Snorlax. And Snorlax is just so popular right now. But it makes sense. It's a very strong Pokemon. Good laning phase. Good team fighting. Does need experience. And a very early Clefable. A super, super early Clefable. So first going for some core. Not considering any damage Pokemon yet that they want. They first want to see what Troopers is going to go for. And then answer with their damage Pokemon afterwards. And Troopers, of course, are going to go for Scyther again. And this time, they pick a Delphox. They pick Delphox away, which I think is huge here with the Blissey. But we are very hard. And Scyther, again, is one of the biggest counter to Delphox also being taken away. So that is a very good start for Troopers. Blissey, Delphox, Scyther looks very scary. What's Max going to do here? A Gardevoir? Again, I mean, that looked not too bad last game. And Ushifu for a third time for Team Marcos. And now we have a Mammoth Swine being picked. And do we see Azumarill again? I want to see something else about Azumarill. But I mean, it's it works for them, right? So why would they not keep going for it? Maybe another Cramorant. I think Devage is still there. Their Fox player. No, this time they go for a Tyranitar themselves. They go for a Tyranitar. All right, Marcos docking in the Dragapult. He locks in a Dragapult. All right, I, I like to see that. I do like to see that. Muscle Band, Scope Lens, Rapid Fire Scarf for the Dragapult. Trinitar running Muscle Band, Weakness Policy and Focus Band. Double Coin Reduction, Choice Specs on Delphox. Another Tech Bait, Muscle Band, Focus Band on the Mammoth Swine. So how's their laning phase going to look like? Is Dragapult going to lane? Or is the right going to lane? No, Dragapult is actually going to mid. And we have Cup View top and the right spot lane. And the little GP walks into the jungle and is going to start taking all the experience. I wonder if you see Phantom Force or Dragon Dance. Again, I think Dragon Dance is much better. But in a tournament setting, Phantom Force can also be fine. Of course. But I'm personally a big fan of Dragon Dance. Has so much more potential. But in these games, it could be hard to get resets, right? Like, Drain Dance is very good when you get those resets in and you can Drain Dance over and over again. But against tanky teams, it could be quite, quite difficult. Against Tyranitar, Blissey, Mammoth Swine, it could be very difficult to actually even get one reset right in a fight. Swine Hoop already being quite annoying, but Snorlax has good early game, so you can always fight. And Lavatar is landing top. We already got nearly have a five on Scyther now. I assume that the Tyranitar is going to take jungle over. In the second rotation, and Scyther's going to start laning now. That's what I would assume for Team Troopers. At least that's what I want to see. Make sure they get Tyranitar fast. 
but they also want level 5 evolution. I mean, the Scyther doesn't evolve, right? But he, they want level 5 on Scyther very fast for the dual wing beat. So he's top lane now, Snowy only level 4. He's gonna go in. And there's Drang Dance. Yeah, we have a Drang Dance. All right, I like it. Looking for maybe KO right here, but the Lavatar's gonna run away with Focus Band. And uh, looks like Scyther's actually going back to jungle. Is Lavatar gonna stay top? No, Lavatar's heading towards the blue buff now. And Scyther's looking maybe for an invade. See a spot of the Curlier. But nothing's gonna happen. And he's gonna join Blissey now back to top lane. And yeah, as I mentioned, now Lavatar or Tyranitar is taking over the white Pokemon in mid. Snowy now level 5, picks up the wicked blow. Uh, 3 bot lane for the side of Marcus. We see another Moonlight on the Clefable. Same as last game. And our Pupitar is going to struggle still for a good amount. Until he gets to level 9. It's going to take quite a while to get to level 9. Saifei shaking into, into Ushifu. His team is here. Six and a half now for the Pupitar. So again, still very, very far away. Highest level currently is the Drugger put on level 7. Or the Drug Log. He's on level 7. Curly are also hitting level 7 now. So experience wise, Marcus currently ahead. <laughs> He's waiting for this to spawn. Q's face shaking to Snowy. He's going to take a huge big blow. Drops to half HP. But Snowy, he, is, he has to be careful. As he jack button away, gets to safety, and he wants to stop Scyther really badly from scoring. Another big blow is being charged, and I think this time he might just fall. He's trying so hard to defend this goal, but he can't. He's alone. His entire team is bot lane already, pushing towards the goal right here. So they're going to score a lot of points for the sub troopers on top. Rex being charged on by the pillow swine. The Drang Dance is there. Is he going to find a reset? They get one KO, and he's going to Drang Dance again. That's two KOs for Marcus on bot goal. Nice push by them there. I know they're going to full control with the Reggie as well. Merrim almost level 9. Not quite yet, and they're gonna start going for this Reggie Steel. Reggie Steel. And it's gonna go over to them quite easily. No contention from Trooper since they're going for top instead now. And he barely misses out on level 9 though. Doesn't quite get it there yet, has to pick up blue buff to get to level 9. And 191 to 109 points now for Marco still, small lead, not too much. And Ego's gonna hit level 9 and Tyranitar. And he's also gonna finally start playing the game anytime soon. Marcus should be able to clear this quite easily. Dragapult has insane damage against these objectives. And you can see it, is, it, it dies so fast. It dies very, very fast. And we have this time Snorlax and Gardova holding bot goal, which is very smart. Again, you could just see an entire rotation of troopers towards bot goal. But they do have two characters there at least to defend in case the push is happening. Ancient Power is going to go on the Clefable. Gravity to maybe buy some time. He's one out to take away from dying, but the Focus Band is going to keep him alive. And now a huge block by Snorlax onto Blissey. And Tyranitar's not done though. Pops the X-Speed. Start chasing. Ancient Post being charged up again. He's going for Snorlax. I think he might fall here. Dual Wing Beat is going to take this knockout. And they're going to start scoring a lot of points. 25 over cap. For this half troopers. Puts them into the lead now again. Good push by them. Very good fight. They catch out Clefable and Snorlax. And God of Wars ended up dying in the end. No, Trinitas here. Almost level 10. Dragapult is the highest level in the game with level 10 himself. Ushifu though, like experience wise, Marcus is still doing very, very good. We are hitting the we still need Mamos for an evolution done as well. But he's after the spy toy, he's gonna get level 9. And now every single Pokemon has Unite Moves up. Or I mean they have Unite Moves, but not up. Gardevoir and Ushifu are missing them right now. And we're going in again with Tarenta. And now we're seeing the casters. And we're back in the match after another pause. We're already in the next team fight on Botlane Ridge Steena, so I guess we missed out on some stuff. Heavy Slam lands onto Delphox. Delphox is gonna die. Taken down. And Ridge is to full HP. Troopers on the four march now. Ancient Power is gonna go into Clefable and he hits it. Dark Point should be enough to get the KO right here. Lex up, but Kyurem actually just runs away still. He just runs away. Clefable too fast, apparently. God was gonna take the top Ridge Licky. And uh, yeah, Troopers is gonna take the Ridge Steel. Right here. Getting some additional attack, physical attack, and special attack. Now we have so much experience up for the side of Troopers. I don't know why there's no one is recalling it. They have so much experience. They have five NDDs up. They have two jungle Pokemon up. They have five, six Spy Toys on their side of the map. And they're not farming them. True Rippers. Every single camp is up on the left side. Okay, now they start going for it slowly. Sal is going to take the buffs, and Deathhawk is going to take the entire bottom NDDs. And Ego's just in a fight. He's getting gravitated. 
And there's the Unite move going on for Trinita. He's going to chase down Clefable. Heavy Slam lands as well again into a Unite move. And uh, Blissey is down. And Trinita is down. And Mamoswine is down. What a weird fight to take. So instead of farming experience, they just went for a fight. Fly of Clefable is following Kyo. But it's not going to do anything. What a weird team fight. They just fought, fought out numbered on the enemy side now. That was a very weird decision by Troopers. Especially by the Trinita. He just wanted to fight. I guess he really just wanted to use it to unite move one more time. But outnumbered, without vision of the enemy team. Very optimistic, a fight to take. Still very close game. Scyther level 12, Delphox level 11. That's what we want for the Mystic Fire Plus. But Marcus has level 13 Drug Up now. A level 12 Gardevoir and a level 12 Urshifu. And now Marcus is caught on top. A Blissey Unite? Did I just see a Blissey Unite? I, I hope I didn't see that. That was something else, right? Surely. Trippers is losing it now. I think they're getting nervous. They are complete control after the second or like in the second match now. I think they're just losing it. Unless he's not going to have Unite move up. That's for sure for the last two minutes now. It's going to take quite a while for Blissey to get Unite move back because Blissey can't farm white Pokemon. If you're a supporter or tank, you have to be very careful because you will not be able to farm white Pokemon. A damaged character can always do it. Because they can farm by toys quite fast, in DDs, whatever is up on the map, and get Unite boost back up. But supports have a difficult time of doing it. Especially Blissey, who has no damage. No Rayquaza has spawned, and I think Marco should just look for a fight. They know that Blissey Unite is down, they have to know it. They should just fight, look for an engage very, very fast. Jump in. Dark Shory dropping to low half HP. Big Blow's gonna miss, but they're going for Tyranitar, who's only level 12 and a half, so he's not really too tanky. And I still want, I want Marcus to be more aggressive right now. I want them to use Unite Boost and go in. Heavy Sam is going to land on Tyranitar, but just for some poke. And they're slowly getting Rayquaza down. They want to, they want this fight very badly as well. Gardevoir only hitting Tyranitar. They're trying to peer back. Mamoswine is in the 1v4 in the back line. He's going to knock up Gardevoir. I take a crashes there. They have to help him out. Heavy Slam is going to land on Mamoswine. Can they take him down? Yes, that's the first KO for the side of Marcos. And they already, they only have three, two more Unite Boost left on Snorlax and on Clefable. Is he going to use it? He's going to use it here to heal up. Which one is he going to get? What ability did he get? Did he get? We're not sure. Mula is going to heal Gardevoir back up. Rayquaza at half HP. Dale Fox looking for Dragapult. And Dragapult is running away from the Moonlight. But the Dragon Dance is going to get Dale Fox. And he's also going to get a reset. Big Blow's being charged. And <laughs> it's too late. But Marcus still secures it. Clefable is going to get Rayquaza for Marcus. That Big Blow was way too late, honestly. I, he should have had it as well. But Clefable is securing Rayquaza right here. Trent is going to defend bot with the true damage. Which means Snorlax can't score. 100 going for Clefable, 100 going for Ushifu. Snorlax might not be able to score. But uh, they still have a good lead right now. 385 to 267. And I think... Mark's gonna get... Yeah, Bliss Unite is now back up. These are some huge mistakes in the late game by both teams though. But the Bliss Unite was by far the biggest one. Because that doesn't allow Scyther to just go in. If they have Blissey Scyther Unite move up, they can just dive whatever they want. Without it. Yeah. And Marcus is gonna take... I don't know if this is an upset or not, I have no idea. But Marcus is gonna take a 2-1 in their first match of this league against True Rippers. GG's to them. Very interesting drafting. Winning with a Dragapult. But honestly, True Rippers, I feel like lost this best of three themselves by doing mistakes. So... But you have to capitalize on your opponent's mistakes, right? That's how you win. The team wins that does the least mistakes. And in this game, Tripper started doing a lot of mistakes in the end. GG's to Marcos for winning.